DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is, is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. Players Lounge, playoff week right here. We are here for you. All right. Heckma Harrison is here. Yes. Danny I mean, McRae is here. This thing is monster. Barry Church will rejoin us later on. You kind of look like Barry from there. This is there's no way I look okay. like Barry. Well, ball, y'all. There, there's just no way. Little beard. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I don't see the expensive watches. It, it definitely ain't. It, that's what I'm saying. Dog. Okay, you, you got me mixed. Up. <laughs> I appreciate it. Everything ain't what it looked like. You shop at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, <laughs> for sure. This show is brought to you by Tostitos. <laughs> Cowboys getting ready to take on the Green Bay Packers. Just left the locker room. So guys, we're out here talking. Uh, but I want to start. With a topic that I know at times you two are a little bit sensitive about. Well, sensitive. Yes. Sensitive yes. topics. Sensitive topic here. All right. But I think I think the time is, is going to finally come. See the news out of Seattle I saw today? it. I saw it. I saw it. Oh, Don't Pete. do that. Don't do that. Why Pete, are you doing that? Pete, Why? Pete, Carroll is, Pete Carroll's not going to coach the Seahawks anymore. Uh, first off, fantastic run. Uh, I think his name will definitely be in the room when they discuss whether or not he goes into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But if you're going to replace Pete, what we saw at USC is they kept trying to find another Pete, which meant you tried to find somebody off the tree. Who's the most logical guy off the tree who's been a part of a Super Bowl team is one there that I think, I think, who's from a defensive standpoint that can fit in there and take over Pete here. Now, go ahead. Don't even try. Don't even try. I know what you're going to try and do, but you know who it is. (laughs) You got a guy. I got a guy. You know, you got somebody. Is it a short list or a long list? Matter of fact, not only is he around here anywhere. Not only do I have a guy, I've got the guy and the guy who can call the plays for him next year. Let me tell you this, okay? The the stuff you was talking yesterday, I wasn't on. I I, I wasn't on board with. If I'm looking at it from from the perspective of that guy, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know because I just I just don't see the potential to get to where you want to be out there with the Chargers. Now, when you start talking about going back home where you was at, where you won a Super Bowl and the organization that you know has run well because Pete still Pete still may be there from what I'm hearing, all this other stuff. Defense, that's where you start. Like, that is that, – that's hard for you to decide you want to pass up. Yeah. You know, to me, Geno's a good quarterback. You got some receivers over there. You then, you then know you're comfortable there because the people know you. And yes. I think that is the biggest thing. Like, you want to go where people are familiar yeah. with you, they understand yeah. you, and you know them. Right, because it ain't it ain't no secrets, ain't no, no surprises gonna come yeah. your way because you are familiar with them and they know exactly what you want and you know exactly what they want. Let's say the name, Dan Quinn. Yes. Okay. Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. Uh Pete Carroll after fourteen seasons, ten playoff appearances, and the franchise's first and only Super Bowl championship is going to uh no longer coach, he's going to become an advisor. And to me, if you're going to hire someone and to talk about what you said here. Who understands their culture? Who can work with the general manager, John yeah. Snyder? To me, Dan, Dan Quinn not only fits, and if you're Dan Quinn, you, you know Brian Schottenheimer, who right now is the Cowboys offensive coordinator, but he's not the play caller. You could potentially have two people who have a clear understanding of what's going on up there. Now, Schottenheimer left uh, up there as the offensive coordinator. Don't know if DQ would bring him in, but uh, of all the places where we talk about a fit, if, if Dan Quinn is going to go, Tech might think that's where you go. And, and Louie, I, I think for, for even last year, I think when you were alluding to his potential for moving out, it was because of the success that he's had, not only as a coordinator, but as a head coach. He's gone to a Super Bowl, didn't win it, but he's gone, and that's an accomplishment all in itself. But that move, when I saw that, it has a feel of homegrown, our guy, you familiarity. Mm-hmm. It's it, it sometimes the, the 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 fit can be too good, it, and it, that's kind of what you feel right now. Um, look, I, it, it would suck to see Dan Quinn leave, uh, especially what he's brought. But that's how other guys are, are are able to be elevated, and that's how other positions open up. And so for me, 
if he can win a Super Bowl on his way out, thank you. <laughs> win a Super Bowl on your way out, but but I think when it comes down to jobs in the NFL, these are far, these are few and far in between. And I think you, as you mentioned yesterday about Jerry Jones, is not a check that he wouldn't write to keep quality guys on staff. But sometimes you can't you can't keep them all, and it's it's a, it is really um, a, the pointing out how good he's been as a coach for all these years. This this reminds me of of. 2007, we were about to play for the national championship, and we had Jimbo Fisher as our offensive coordinator, Les Miles as the head coach, and we had Bo Pelini as the defensive Defensive coordinator. coordinator. And Right before that, the Bo Pelini yeah. told us that he was leaving the next year. And we did ride out of there with the national championship. But Bo Pelini at that time was a highly sought-out uh, defensive coordinator. Yeah. And the, the same type of noise was coming, perfect fits and all that stuff. And then we found out that Bo Pelini was leaving. This feels like that. Like, it's a sad moment. But then for me, knowing that this is this is a perfect fit for the guy. And if it yeah. does happen... Hey man, it this makes one sense. that you got to take. Do I hope he? I hope it. I hope he doesn't leave us. But I mean, he's he probably stayed longer than than he, he had to already. He definitely got an extra year. But but that speaking on what you talk, piggyback on what you talked about, Bo Pelini in Seattle when they ended up winning the first Super Bowl. Dan Quinn went and took over the Atlanta Falcons, so he got the ring and then he was gone. So there is a precedent of Dan Quinn being a defensive coordinator, helping lead a team to a championship, and moving on to become a head coach. So if, that, if, if history repeats itself, obviously, Heckman, you, you'd be happy. Absolutely. But I just think of what a perfect fit. And if I'm the general manager, John Snyder, I don't know. You know, All these GMs have different coaches they like and, and maybe will want to work with. And it just seems to me, if I'm John Snyder, I'd like to have a head coach who I can work with, who I've, I've, we've been able to draft together. That's a huge part. I think that's also kind of what went on in Tennessee is the head coach had different ideas about personnel. This could fit. This could fit, could be the perfect time. So if the Cowboys lose Dan Quinn and he goes to Seattle, hey, man, thank you, DQ, for what you've done here. Yeah. And now Jerry's got a very, very important decision about what he does in terms of who's your next defensive coordinator. Do you promote from within? Joe Witt, do, do you have him take over? Or does Joe go with DQ to exactly. Seattle? Exactly, yeah. And, and how many other people? Go with DQ. Does Aiden Dirty, your defensive line coach, does he go up to Seattle with DQ? So that that's going to be a very interesting uh, thing if, and we're speculating at this point, but I think we all agree, if you're an NFL team right now, Dan Quinn should be on your list and should be a guy you want to hire just based on what you've seen here with the Cowboys. But don't forget, this is a guy who, by all accounts, should have had a Super Bowl win. Yeah, absolutely. And, and- Man, what he was a half away, <laughs> uh, one half away from Dude, two. About like seven minutes. Away. Seven minutes <laughs> away. Seven okay, minutes give us seven minutes away from <laughs> for being the Super Bowl champ. But we've talked about quarterbacks that, and being them being the difference at getting you to a championship. And we also have to include head coach as well. With Mike, when we see the job, like guys like Mike Tomlin, guys that's been around that's never had a losing uh, record as a as a head coach, and you see his brand, his pedigree of coaching, and the way that he imprints on teams. We've seen this just in three years with Dan Quinn, what he's done to this defense and the way that these guys have bought into him. And so every time he takes the podium, every time he talks, he talks like somebody. You're like, man, I want more of that. I want to hear more of that. And so I think it's it's only a natural fit for Dan Quinn. If we lose him uh, in this situation, man, I, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be sad because this is one of those jobs that opened up. He's like, as soon as I saw it, the first name I thought about was Dan Quinn. Like, he left the there it is. There it is right there. I, I, I mean, I think I think that's across the NFL. Uh, all Everybody, when when they saw that Pete Carroll wasn't coming back, the, the first name that probably popped up was Dan Quinn Dan because Quinn. Dan Quinn has been doing head coach interviews for the last couple of years. And like you said, this guy, <laughs> defensive coordinator, uh, Super Bowl, goes to Atlanta, takes over as a head coach, and is this close to winning the Super Bowl, comes here, and it's totally changed the culture here, with, along with Mike McCarthy. But defensively, has changed the culture here with how yes. these guys are playing on the, on the defense. So I mean, it's just hard for you not. It's hard for me to say, all right, go ahead and go. But then we like we know we understand because you remember we the understand. thing about the thing about what you understand, what you remember, Danny. You remember historically bad. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you remember historically bad defense and what they were not. We 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 complain about the run defense, but it was nothing in yeah. compared to what the run defense. I mean, we were. Not getting any turnovers uh, before he came in and just 
completely flip flop that. I'm almost oh, I'm okay with the run defense now. <laughs> I'm all right with it. Yeah, yeah, it's good enough. It's good enough. I saw Mazi in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Put him in. It's good enough. <laughs> all right, hey, well, hey, listen. If that's what it takes, okay, I'm all right with You're good whatever. With the run <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dan Quinn left it better than he found it. And, and, yes, and he Dan did. Quinn. He ain't left nothing. Goodness gracious! How far ahead are this you? Is, this is this <laughs> man. The time, you, he the time skip. He will <laughs> take the can, carpet. Can I, for can I say? Right, I'm okay. saying, if they don't hire him, they're crazy. <laughs> All right, that's just me right now. If, if if Seattle doesn't go get Dan Quinn, they're crazy because there's so many just parallel. For, what, what is Pete Carroll? Defensive guy. What else is Pete Carroll? High energy guy that, that inspires yeah. people. This dude is. This is the guy. He was a part of what Pete Carroll was doing. You can keep it in terms of my, my opinion. That that kind of what's Pete's built. You can keep that going. I think they built a good program there. Yeah, of course. That's a good program. And to me, I'd like to, if, if if I'm the owner and the general manager, I'd like to keep this type of thing going. We've got another voice. We got a guy who also, by the way, has something to prove. That's what I would want. If they don't do it, I mean, tell me well, who rolls up in but, but the fact that he's still here. He's, yes. This man just with, said he with, left it better than he found it. With, he, he's still with, here. He's still, he's still, he's still, he's still got we, work to do. We mourning him. He's, still, he's, he's at, got work to do. Okay, at this, okay, at this point at, in time. He got since, work to do. Since he's gotten here, okay. he's left it better than he's found yes. it. I can still say oh, that. No, no, no. You're not finna parse words. He, he hasn't left anything. So he hasn't left He's still anything. here making it better. <laughs> you, you can only say he left it better than he found it if he's gone. Gone. He's still here. Okay. He's he's, he's okay. making it. He's still continuing to make it better than he found it. Okay. Um, Dan Quinn is still here. Uh, by the way, um, <laughs> this, according to Tom Pelissero in a uh, social media post, the Titans requested to interview Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn for their head coaching job. There are logical connections to Seattle with that job opening, but don't assume that's where DQ lands. He has strong interest elsewhere with four requests and counting. So that's from Tom Bellicero. I, I, I think it's really up to him. Like, all those requests that he's getting, it's up to him. They, they're going to leave it up to him to decide. Kind of almost like free agency. Like, hey, which one? <laughs> who's coming? They're like courting the guy. Because it's hard for you to sit there. I can I can't imagine them taking an interview with a guy like Dan Quinn and then walking out of that room and being like he he's he, that's he's, not it. He's not. Yeah, he's that's not, not it. He he's not he's, he's not, not a way for us. I, like I I I can't imagine that happening. And, I, and you know what? And, and this is a side note. Are y'all watching the Miami Dolphins? Uh, in season thing. Now listen, I know leader leaders of men are different and all that stuff. I'm still trying to trying to figure out the the whole McDaniel's thing. He's different. He's I'm, quirky. I know. Yeah, he's, he's got I, his quirks. He's a. I know, I, I, and, I'm, and I'm trying not to sound old school myself, but I'm, I'm like, what okay. is it? What you got, school? No, I, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> what you got? Like, I, you know, that's the different. interest we need. <laughs> I, I don't see undercover I don't brother. See, I don't see undercover that. brother. I see living like I don't that see that way. Nice story. The story, I, you know, the story is great and all that stuff. But you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about a guy like Dan Quinn walking in the room and doing an interview, and somebody said, "You're not the guy," and then you know, but look what it this came, is the guy. But yeah, look, yeah, yeah. But look at what it came down to. Remember the top top two. Finalists were for that job. It was Undercover Brother and, and Kelly Kel. Moore. Who you take? They, yeah, listen. They, they made the right decision. They made the right choice. No, they did. But Kelly did interview for the head coach's job up there at, at the Chargers, though. Let him get it. <laughs> let him get it. Let him get it. And you want Dan Quinn to go get it. Let, it, let him get it. <laughs> you know I, 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 if, first off, Jim Harbaugh is what they need. Mm -hmm. Just based on my time of living and working in Los Angeles, this is a franchise – I tell you, they don't care that they're there. They don't. It's like the Clippers. You're here, and people go to the games to see the other team more so than they go to see you. Right. So they need some credibility. Jim Harbaugh would give you that credibility. The people, oh, let's go on out there. Because when I worked there, and this was always the challenge you had, you only have so many resources. Hey, did we go out to Chargers practice today? Nah. Go out to the Rams or you go to the Lakers. I mean, there's so many options you have. They're not the option where you think of, hey, man, let's go down there. I mean, so many times we didn't go to go cover the Angels. Now, the Yankees came to town. Well, let's go and cover them. And so to me, if you're the Spanos family, you not only have a quarterback you think has the potential to be a really good player, but you have people who don't care. And, and if you're not into the whole business aspect of it, Kroenke, the owner of the Rams, owns SoFi. 
the Rams are his tenant. And when he decided he didn't want the Raiders and he wanted the Chargers, the Chargers are supposed to sell a certain amount of season tickets and PSLs. They ain't done it. People don't try to buy them. They are kind of looked at as not a good tenant. I mean, you got to bring somebody up in here. This is their opportunity to actually sell their product to people because Jim Harbaugh would make you want to go cover them. And that's an issue. How do you get people to cover us? Yeah, here's my thing with, with going back to what you were talking about, about Mike McDaniels and even to Harbaugh. There's this generational gap in coaching. And, and sure. from, from my – look, I, I interview a lot of coaches in, in what I do, man. Um, and you find out that there's a, there's a new guard that's coming that understands the social media age, that understand things, the trend. It, and they are able to connect easily with players versus – the more old school, more rigid, more iron fist kind of guys. Dabo, it, it's it's changing, and and you're starting to see. I mean, and the ones that are not able to evolve are absolutely relics of themselves. At the end of the day, I think what I am impressed about with a guy like Dan Quinn is he reinvented himself after one of uh, an astronaut, like a bad loss in front of everybody saw him lose that game. But yet he, he still kept in stride and still has reinvented himself here with the Cowboys as a, a defensive coordinator. Jim Harbaugh as well. After what happened with him in, in San Francisco, losing the Super Bowl the way that he did, the whole the lights went out, didn't he? the light <laughs> the lights went out. But also just the controversy was that was that one, the controversy yeah. surrounding that team. He's been able to go to the college bar, get, look, finally beat Ohio, and now look at where he is, at Ohio State, and, and finally win him a national championship. But I think a lot of these a lot of these uh, coaches, a lot of these organizations are looking for the what's fresh the new guy that can connect not only with the players, but can connect to a, a new fan base. So it's important to get a guy that can make those connections. And I know Dan Quinn is easily that guy. Yeah, and, and Jim's a former Charger player. And to me, you go and you look at how college football, nine years, how it changed. All of a sudden, while you're coaching, here comes NIL. And he recruited well. Um, remember, he was making those videos he, like, he "Who's got a better off than nobody?" Day. Right, <laughs> taking him over to Rome. I mean, I, I thought I thought Jim did a very good job of connecting with the young people. I just know he's not going back after two suspensions and a possible another investigation going. He's as hot as he's ever been. You've done the job, man. You get out of that thing, and you don't have to do any more recruiting, any more nil. You guys gonna have a pick of a litter. That porter, litter. that porter gonna be jumping from the man. <laughs> Michigan. Not if they get his, uh, if they hire his old boy. You know, man, luck, just, you know, them dudes jumping up out, man. They getting up out of there. Crazy. Them dudes they getting go. up out of there. Yeah, it'll be, all right. We well, need to take a break. We, we're a little bit late here. Um, Cowboys taking on the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, man, you got Dan Quinn out of here. We golly. Hey, baby, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm about <laughs> what's next. Let's get ready to prepare, man. The game. That's what's next with Dan Quinn here as the defensive coordinator. That's that, you what know it what? Is. Time for DQ to do what he did in Seattle. Go out on top, right? Let's see if we can get that done. With Heckma Harris and Danny McCrabney, we score. This is the Players Lounge brought to you by Tostitos on DallasCowboys.com radio. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash Cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash Cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. There is no I in Dallas. There is no I in heart either. No I in Blue Star or in Lone Star for that matter. And there's no I in how about them cowboys? 
Smirnoff knows there's no I in football. Football is a we thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because there's definitely no I in Cowboys fans. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to the Players' Lounge. You know the drill, Cowboy Nation. White out at AT AT&T Stadium this weekend. Show up for our boys as they take on the Green Bay Packers in the 2023 NFL Wild Card Round in an all-white game day outfit. Head to the pro shop near you or log on to shop.dallascowboys.com, a fanatics experience to find your white gear. All right. Thank you very much, Heckman Harrison. Your players lunch brought to you by Tostitos. Also, we've got Danny McCray here. I'm Newish Scruggs. The Cowboys will wear their white jerseys. In this game, Packers are going to be wearing green. Green Bay has won the last two postseason meetings against the Cowboys. And in those two meetings, they were coached by Ms. Ike. Mike McCarthy. By the way, Mike McCarthy's got a postseason record of 11 and 10. Heckman, you spoke about CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb led the NFL with 680 yards after the catch this year. The Packers' defense allowed the ninth fewest yards after the catch this season. Last year, the divisional round, San Francisco, CeeDee Lamb caught 10 balls, 417 yards, 10 receptions tied for third most in Cowboys history here. And another note on CeeDee Lamb for his regular season, leading all receivers in targets, 181. Receptions, 135. Yards after the catch, 680. Scrimmage yards, 1,000. 862 overall touchdowns 14 20 plus yard receptions 29 and ranked second in receiving yards 1749 seems to me like joe barry the defensive coordinator with the packers better go double look cd lamb is balling right now <laughs> i'm about to say who you think the mccaffrey is no he's he talking about after, C- you, after you read it out loud i was like goodness gracious church <laughs> that's <laughs> not hey, mccaffrey's balling up. Well, he that's a hell of a season that's Especially a hell with of a slow start yes Absolutely. Four games, 50 yards each. And I think he is now he is now just emerged as that guy that when you look amongst those Randy Moss type performances, you look at those the old school Michael Irvin performance. He's wearing the 88, of course. But those are the type of performances that we we've been looking for for CeeDee Lamb. If you're going to be a number one receiver, if you look around the league and you look at guys like Jay Jettas, you look at Chase, you know, Jamar Chase, these guys are, are showing their tail on Sunday. You know, and it's I don't care if you double team, if you triple team, what they're going to do, they're going to find a way to get their playmakers the ball. In this game, and, and you talk about the job that the Green Bay Packers does allowing the ninth least amount of yards after catch, yes, I'm okay with that. Because I know, I know for sure that they're going to have to find a way to stop C.D. Lamb, but they can't take away all of our weapons. And so, to me... That says that another playmaker has to emerge, Don't and I got my Don't and I got that. my eyes. I got my eyes on Fergus. Don't do that. Okay. What do you mean? We only got we got three. All right, because we got Cooks. I want to see Ferg, and I want to see C.D. Lamb in the passing game. Like that's one of those weapons. Yes. I, like I said, we I think we talked about when we start going away from those guys, it starts to look a little shaky on our offense, and all of a sudden you you know third and whatever, and then you punt the football. Yeah. Give it to the guys who have been making sure that you are successful throughout the season, which is C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks. When you throw it to him, he's gonna catch it, and, and, and a lot of times, a lot of times with a touchdown. And Ferguson, who is your tone setter on offense yep. when it comes to physicality. And oh yeah, by the way, Tony Pollard, who I said is going to have a 75 yard rushing game with 30 yards receiving, is still on your squad, and he had a nice rushing game last week to get him started. That confidence booster, right? You should be healthy on your offensive line this week, hopefully. So. That, that, I think that's what you have to do. Like, we want to establish the run game, but don't go away from CD because we're a passing team and CD Lamb is our guy. And and I'm not and in no way am I saying go away yeah, yeah. from CD Lamb. I just know that when you go to talk about this, this offensive, this, excuse me, the defensive uh, coordinator for Green Bay, him and Mike McCarthy have history with one another. He was the uh, 2007, he was the defensive coordinator for the Lions. Rob Marinelli was the head coach of that Lions team. How good were they? And he put up <laughs> oh, Ofer. Yeah. <laughs> he put up. But, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Joe should shut everybody down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Joe Barry put some respect on his name. <laughs> Joe Barry in 2007 and 2008, every time Mike McCarthy saw him <laughs> on the other side. 
alive. And everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they put that work, work. in. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> work. Work. Can't wait to see Joe Barry. <laughs> work, 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 work. Yeah. Another opportunity. Barbecue chicken alert. <laughs> got a special notebook for Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me, so, let me, so he already he already know Joe Barry. You know, so I, I think that with with all of that. Again, knew you a mess, man. I, I think you. I, I'm with you. Force feed CD, uh, but only to a point, and then allow your tight ends and allow guys like Brandon Cooks to do their thing. I want to ask this question <laughs> about CD and, and and McCarthy, who, who's the play caller this year. Uh, a guy we all respect very much, who played for Mike McCarthy, had a lot of good years. Devontae Adams. Does this remind you of when we saw Devontae Adams really getting after it in Green Bay, being that guy? And there were times where you kind of looked around like, it's Devontae, and we really don't know who else is there. And Aaron Rodgers was just finding him, and he was out there balling. Do you feel like CD is now in that kind of realm? I, I do. I do. But I think I think it, it looks different because I think a lot of times you will see Devontae Adams with that it would be a run play. Aaron Rodgers would look up, see that they was playing off, and he would just toss it to Devontae Adams, and he would have 10 catches just off that with 100 yards. I think C.D. Lamb is running running routes. You don't see him getting a lot of those opportunities, but you also see him in the backfield as well. So I think the talent there is a little different, and Mike McCarthy is finding the best way to utilize every single talent that, uh, that so, C.D. Lamb has. So, Heck, then, then let me see if I can take it in this angle, Heck. We saw Mike – get a lot out of Adams, making him his number one. We saw Jordy Nelson as his mm-hmm. number one, putting up some numbers. We saw Greg Jennings over there. James we saw, Jones. We saw Donald Driver as that yes. one guy, those guys that get fed. Do you now feel like this is like the next iteration for McCarthy in terms of that number one guy? Automatically. Automatically. And, and I think what I, I think is taken, at, and it was maybe by the fifth game, you saw Dak say, this is my least path of – resistance is getting the ball to 88. This is the easiest way to do it. Let's forget all the other equations. If I can get him the ball, he's going to give me yards and after catch, and he's also going to move the chains. And that's I, I love Dak's willingness to say, I'm going to change my whole game to make sure I fit this in with this guy because now everybody's talking about them as a dynamic duo. Before, you weren't, you weren't talking about them as a duo. Now it's Dak and, and, and CD, but you're right. It's, it's just – it's just a continuation of, of what Mike has done as an offensive coordinator, making sure that he gets his best players the ball. Which is this is why it's so confusing what Kellen Moore was doing last year. This is like you got the guy on the roster. Yeah, two of the guys on the roster right. at one time and couldn't figure out a way to get it. I think that is the big difference from uh, Kellen Moore to Mike McCarthy is, hey, man, what are we good at? Who are our players that we need to make sure we get the football to? And I think C.D. Lamb emerged, especially after he did what he did and made sure that Coach knew that he wanted the football. And ever since then, he's been getting the football. And he's been showing that I deserve it because all he's done is is make plays throughout the whole season. What you said there, and let's just, just be straight up. This isn't damning. This is just pure facts. Kellen Moore left the building. Mike McCarthy said, I need to take over the play calling. CeeDee Lamb is the second best receiver in the National Football League. Tyreek Hill and what he's done this year is going to be – he'll be all pro, and then it's going to be CeeDee Lamb. I was looking at somebody's um, Offensive Player of the Year ballot, and they had CeeDee number three. Wow. It, it was Hill, McCaffrey, then CeeDee Lamb. So, Kellen goes out of the building, and this is what Mike has done with CeeDee Lamb. And then here's Dak Prescott – who's going to finish top three, if not no less than top five, in the MVP voting. That's where I go back to was about Kellen Moore and why I was not one of those people standing up there like, oh, this is not right. And with, no, Kellen Moore, there were too many times we were scratching our heads, Danny. And this is why we were scratching our heads. These guys had more that you could unlock, and it took McCarthy – to find it, and the Cowboys basically made Mike McCarthy take Kellen Moore from the time he got this job here. And, and – but during that time, this is kind of remember because I don't want to be a like revisionist history person. I want to go back to when Kellen came on as the OC. That that was the wave then that you hired these young mm-hmm. guys, and it was surprising that he didn't get the head coach McVay. McVay and, and, it, and it was a young wave of coaches that were starting to come on, and I think automatically you were looking. Jerry was looking for something new and fresh. The, the offenses in in the NFL had completely opened up five wide. You know, mm-hmm. McVay was you were seeing offensive formations that you hadn't seen before and they gave they they put the gas in that engine to make him run that way not saying that Mike and Mike didn't approve of it and everything that you're saying Danny about 
the way that he coordinated that offense is true. I think that he missed certain points of the, of having making his playmakers the playmakers. This is the best version of Dak Prescott that I think I've seen. As far as the way it's, well, hands down, it's hands down, the, the statistics say so. It's hands down the best. Best version of him that I've seen. And I think all of that is due to his relationship with Mike McCarthy. But where was that three years ago? Was was Kellen Moore that much of a deterrent between head coach and quarterback? Well, when you when you have a, a young and up and coming guy, you want to make sure that you don't you don't get in the way. Is what I assume Mike McCarthy was doing. Okay, but I, that's but it. I'm, but I'm looking Absolutely. at I'm looking at, and I said this every time that a guy had a season like that when, when Amari Cooper uh, had to get up out of here, and I know there were other things going on, but before that, I don't think he was being utilized correctly. And then you see him go to Cleveland, and he him being utilized correctly with yeah. with lesser quarterbacks and still putting up uh, astronomical numbers. And I'm I'm looking at I'm saying if I'm, if I'm Amari Cooper, I'm upset with Kellen Moore. And then for whatever people want to say about Zeke, Zeke looked different this year with uh with New England. He looked different than he looked here uh, when, when he was with New England. And we couldn't find a way to do anything except run him up behind the tackle and get two or three yards and have him pass block. <laughs> Between the guard and center. Like, like, <laughs> like we, we, when, when Zeke left here, we were like, oh, man, dude lost a whole bunch of steps. Well, people were saying that. Lost a whole bunch of steps. Not the same in the passing game, all that stuff. He go out there with Mac Jones, take Stevens' spot once, once he goes down, and they never look back because Zeke is out there getting, you know what I'm saying, putting up numbers. So, yeah. to me, you're not – he wasn't able to utilize his players in the right way. Now he did better with Keenan Allen, uh, finally when they got out there. But here, I didn't. I didn't see it. So shout out to Big Bite, CD Lamb, Brandon Cooks, uh, f- still figuring Tony Pollard out. But I, I think I think he's gonna get there in the playoffs. So Mike that, was right. Kool Aid, baby. Mike, Mike was right. And what's what's kind of <laughs> wild is if he was just a off, if he was just the coordinator right now, people would be lining up to bring him in. Yeah, as a head coach, you know this Bobby Slowick guy, Ben Johnson, you know these offensive coordinator at Houston and Detroit. You know, these guys are getting jobs. I could be, oh look at this guy here. Um, what Mike did here and and making taking these players to another level they haven't been before. I don't think we're talking about it enough. I, I really don't because he's the head coach and people are like, well, what haven't you won here before? What he did in his year here, and we're not even talking about the full season because the first five games here they were still trying to figure it out. Right. He even spoke about how he was trying to get back in the rhythm and they were trying to figure out this thing out. This thing is this thing is as good as we've seen it here in a good decade or so. Mike been- Mike doesn't get the credit that he deserves, and we know. I think we all know why sure. uh, he does it, and that's why we're having to entertain foolish questions about whether he's going to be back. Um, well, that's because but, right, and, and, and <laughs> that's I, because look, you're and I know it's his employer, from his employer went out there and threw that bomb and left. Yeah, I, hey, I, and when we was off here, I wanted to come in here and say, "Hey, I know we always talk about everybody want to talk about the Cowboys, all that stuff." There's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> there is a he, reason. He Headline. Oh, oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> like you, you can't not wake up in the morning and be like, "We got to talk about this game, game by game, <laughs> game by game." game. We got to talk about it, game and, by. And it's just it's those little nuggets that the media goes in and they try and decode and, and speak, Jerry. I, I just look. Here's the thing for me, go, especially going into a game like this versus Green Bay. All of that experience that you have with at the helm as your, as your head coach has got to mean something for you. He's been there. He's done that. You think about his – you just talked about his playoff record. You talked about him in the NFC Championship, divisional rounds, all of those things. Mike is a proven winner. And so when I think about going into a game like this, I'm going to rely heavily on that experience because he has to get these guys ready because he's been there before. Let's get our second break in here with Danny McCray, Heckma Harrison. I'm Nui Scruggs. This is a Players' Lounge brought to you by Tostitos on DallasCowboys.com. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, T-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hi, I'm Danny McCray, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want a munch. 
-hmm. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back, back to the back. Players' Lounge. Your Dallas Cowboys return home to take on the Green Bay Packers in the wild card round of the 2023 playoffs. Get ready to white out AT&T Stadium on Sunday, January 14th at 3.30 p.m. on Fox. It's time to seize everything. For playoff updates, visit DallasCowboys.com slash playoffs. Heck, my Harrison, thank you very much. You got Danny McCray here. Barry Church is off today. I'm Louis no. Scruggs. This is the Players' Lounge. Brother Newey. By Tostitos. Brother Newey, I did a read yesterday. That they gonna play before the game, brother Nui? No. Did you give it to Michael Irvin type? Type? Ooh, Did you take it to church? Did you get well, some sermon on I'll it? I'll tell you what. You gonna now, be like, this, oh, put me in, coach. <laughs> is this on camera or? No, 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 no. It voice, was it's just voice. voice. Yeah, it's oh, just okay. voice. How many? How many read throughs did you do? Ah, oh, one take heck. Ooh. No, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas right there in the room. I want to you know, you gotta be, yeah, you gotta, yeah, hey, you gotta yeah, be honest. Yeah, gotta be, yeah. You need more bass? Yeah, 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 nah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like a recording yeah, artist. Yeah. Well, I go, listen, I know I go in there and do it take me four or five times sometimes, depending on how long the read is. Yeah. Acai. I, I was like, huh? <laughs> how, can you, how you pronounce this? Yeah. <laughs> Conquer Cam. Yeah, Conquer Cam. <laughs> and then we look at New and he just read it like, like he just memorized it already. Tell you. The Tell Cowboys are now playing in their 14th wild card <laughs> oh, playoff game, is. guys. <laughs> They've got an eight and six record. Uh, it's been a challenge against these Green Bay Packers. So um, here they are. Uh, lost their last two. That was the Dez caught it game and yeah. the Aaron Rodgers killed everybody game. The sideline uh, throw. Yeah. Rook, the rookie Ooh. year. Um, yeah. Killed that. That was, that was a throw now. I was there on the sideline. Ooh, that, that was, was different. Throw. I was there on the sideline when Cook caught it. Jared Cook. On a rope. <laughs> like, my gosh. And With the Mason, Aaron Rodgers smirk. <laughs> and then, you know, Mason Crosby came out there and finished the job. But, hey, Mike McCarthy was the head coach of those teams. Now it's Matt LaFleur. And I asked Brandon Cooks basically about the pressure. How do you keep these guys relaxed? From the standpoint, the pressure's on you. Green Bay, is, they're playing with house money. And, <laughs> and Cooks is like, no, mm -hmm. yeah, no, we'll, we'll be fine. But you and I all know that building's going to get tight if this game is, is close. It's going to get tight because Cowboy fan is now conditioned to say, man, there it goes again. Mm -hmm. And I remember Jimmy Johnson when he coached here. You weren't, you weren't, you don't remember this, but back with Jimmy Johnson, like, hey guys, you thought here it goes again. Well, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It wasn't here it goes again. You went and you took it. That's what this team needs. And I go back to last year's game at Tampa in the playoffs when I was down there. They had a mission of, you know what, man, that San Francisco thing is. Hot. We want to erase it. And they went out there from jump and just took it from Tampa Bay. I think that's what we need to see again here. In my opinion. What was Tampa's record? I don't recall, but it was like it below five hundred. It was no, 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 no. They they had a, it was they were eight nine. No, I no, think they were nine and eight, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah it they, was, it they, wasn't, they was close. They weren't exactly. they weren't that good of a it wasn't, team. It wasn't the right. NFC South wasn't <laughs> that they good. They weren't that good of a team. Yeah, yeah. good enough to beat yeah. that in the, in the regular season. No, yeah, yeah, knocked yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they beat them the year before too. They, yeah. they weren't that good of a team. You you know what we can right. So here's my thing. I hear what you're saying that they weren't that good, especially at the end of the year where they were. But this was still a Cowboy team that had never beaten Tom Brady, and he found ways to beat them yes. in two previous times. My, my, my point is, they weren't that good of a team, and I don't expect that we, we, that we assume that Green Bay 
should be giving us that much of a challenge right. here at home. So the credit that we would get for beating Green Bay is not going to be as much <laughs> as if, if we were beating a San Francisco or any of those other teams. Of course. So, but, but you know that. I mean, so yeah, yeah. So, you're, you're the number two seed. You get the seven seed in here. You you get basically, I know what you're saying, you get no credit for the win. You don't. It's an expe- expectation. <laughs> but, How do we? But, 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 that's, but, but, that's, but that hey. is, they know what they've signed up for. No, hold but, on but now. No, but that, that is – so 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 I, so who's been our, our Achilles heel for the last uh, two seasons in the playoffs? San Francisco. So so we all know that the expectation is as of today be is that you're probably going to have to go to San Francisco yes. and, and beat them. So that that is the expectation. Everything else is, hey man, we got to go out here and handle our business and and beat the teams that, that that we know we should beat. And then once we get to that big time game, then that's when the fight really starts. But we so, need to handle our business to get there. So, and the Green Bay Packers are just a team. Wrap it up, heck. I mean, I, I think. You know, my my hate and disdain for the media that covers our team is that they are always trying to spread fear. They always want us to give us something to be afraid of. Oh, you only be you can't beat playoff teams or teams above five hundred. You can't win on the road. You can't do this. Now look at Brandon Aubrey can't click you miss it. It's always this fear factor to, oh, if, if Mike McCarthy loses, he's out of here. This all of this when at a certain point you have to say the Dallas Cowboys are a damn good team. When does that ever come up? When does it? No, I'm not, and I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about you two personally. When do you say the Dallas Cowboys are a good team? Because right now, when you say, "Oh, the Green Bay Packers is playing with house money," yeah, oh, they're just coming in here on school buses, and you know, Chick Fil A is going to cater it for them. I mean, and next thing you know, a football team, a football game is going to break out of three, you know, mm-hmm. and they got every chance in the world to win it. No, they don't. Man, what if we we come in there and we kick? They uh, come on now. Yeah. This is our this is our opportunity to put our domination down because at the, at the end of the day. You you're right. None of this matters. The only thing that matters is beating San Francisco, but it's steps to get there. And they have to win their games, too, to get there. But nobody says it the way it's supposed to be said. Man, the Cowboys are a damn good team. And the, the team that just snuck into the playoffs, damn, they drew the, the, the best match, the matchup that could really get them. That's a one and, one and done for them because they drew the Cowboys. I, I, think, I think it's fair to say that the history of the Cowboys is why people feel that way. Right. The trust it's, isn't it's not, there. Yeah, the, the I, trust I don't, I don't think it, So people say that the Cowboys are a really good team, but somehow when they get to the big moment, they find a way to mess up. Like, that is the thing of like, hey, man, they, they're going to be a really good team, and then they may not show up at a certain time to make sure it happens. Tony Romo dropping the field goal. It's 27 years now, So I don't think it's, it's 20, 20, a media it's, thing. It's, it's 27 years now, and it's 2024. When do we not? When can we stop living under the umbrella? When do we get there? So when we beat San Francisco, Francisco, we, we beat San Francisco, go to the Super Bowl, win, whatever. We go to the Super Bowl. Is that the end of it? Do, you, so. do you stop saying it then? 27 you, years later. Uh, like, if, yeah. If, if do you, go you stop saying 20, it if then, you go, then? If you go another 27, then, then it rises back so, up. But, yes, until you get – it don't even have to be Super Bowls. It's NFC Championship. Because it, they're not selling me that my team is good. They're not selling me on my offense being good, that my quarterback but and my receivers are good. Yeah. I'm just – what they're saying is, man, Jordan Love's going to come in the last six games that he's played. I mean, look at the games he's played. Look but, at the yards he's putting but up. But everybody said this has been Dak Prescott's come best season. Nope, I'm said not that. personally what? talking about you, Danny. I'm talking no, about I'm, those that cover the team that have words to say that this isn't the best team that's in the NFC championship, that's in the NFC uh, playoff race. Hmm? Hey, them and San Francisco are the two teams that everybody's expecting to meet in the in the NFC championship. Is that, is that what people are saying? That's what they should be saying. I think they are, though. Uh, well, or not. I don't why, know. why are the expectations know. high for this team? Why aren't they? They are high for this team. <laughs> How okay? If you're telling me, if man, chances are you, the Green Bay could come in here and, and they could beat the Cowboys because they're playing with house money. There's no pressure on them. No, no, no. We we say that every week though. Well, I, I know you're not talking about us, so I got you. I got you. Look, it's not us. So, so this is a just two years ago when they had they won the NFC East and you had San Francisco at home. And I remember distinctly, Dan, you talked about man, this is a matchup where we you know, a style matchup that's not good for us. And what happened? They lost. So we've seen the Cowboys go into these games and let you down. This is a what about twenty you're there this club is paying for the sins of other people. But that's a part of it. And I go back to this and you know it very well because of your your great uncle Joe Green. Before they ended up winning that Super Bowl under Bill Cowher, those guys were talking about, man, we hate every time these old dudes show up, man, because, you know, everybody just remind us of what we haven't done and you're not there and you're not there. This is what happens when you play for a legendary franchise. People want you to get back there. And then the owner does a great job of building it up every year and talking about the Super Bowl, something that nobody's seen. This is a team right now, based on what they've done at home, 
that you believe should win two playoff games at home and play for the NFC Championship. Yeah, the expectation is there. If it doesn't happen, people are going to be upset. All I'm talking about is even last week going into the Commanders game, we gave the Commanders a chance. We gave them a chance when they had literally no chance in beating us. And our team, it, we, we had the better team. And, and this is, and again, I'm not talking about you. Oh, I, I, you <laughs> said we, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not talking about you. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying me. from the outlook right. uh, on the outside looking in about the Dallas Cowboys, it's not a situation where they said this, this, this team should go in and they should dominate them. No. Jordan Love is is an up and coming star in the NFL, and I wouldn't be surprised if they went into AT and T Stadium and beat. Have the they Dallas earned Cow- the benefit of the doubt that you can't that you cannot just say, "Hey, what, what could the Packers do?" This Cowboys team has is, is let folks down enough to know that they're going to leave the door open to say, you know what, Jordan Love is playing well. Could it happen? Could they do it? Because it's been done before. Who are you picking Friday? Dallas. I had to okay. pick him up in the right, Dallas Morning on. News. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I gotta picked, watch this shit. I Dallas, <laughs> I and I picked him by seven. I mean, <laughs> this is you know, this is what this I is you talking about some like uh, some specific people. You got to be talking about because because when I wake up in the morning and I and I turn on whatever show, I've seen people saying, "Hey, th- th- this is the best Cowboys team or the best Dak Prescott has played." But there's always going to be with any team, somebody that's covering a team. If you sleepwalk into there and you and you don't go in there handle business, then Absolutely. you can lose. And I think that's. Yes. I think Absolutely. that's what I think that's what I'm saying. I don't know what the wild card else is round consistently produces an upset. Last year, I picked the Giants to go to Minnesota and win, and the Giants ended up doing. It. We see it every year. You you met you know you you mess around, you can't find out. All right, let's do this tomorrow, guys. Uh, Danny <laughs> McCray, let a Nate say a no, right? Heck, uh, Heck Mahara, Sub New East Scruggs, Players Lounge, Rodney by Tostitos. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!